But there has been some speculation, Alexander, that part of the popularity of the voice referendum rests on the general public knowing nothing about it. Indeed, Albanese and many of his friends in the activist community are encouraging people to vote yes based upon their feelings and emotions. Is this a distraction from the reality that they are asking for a race-based appointed bureaucratic power for a few privileged individuals to sit above our democracy in what we thought was a type of politics long gone? Yeah, well, a couple of things in that. I definitely do think that you're right. The trajectory of the Constitution is one of liberality. Uh, you, you know, we... Um, we have been in a situation now for some time where we've improved the constitution over time. We've we've given uh, full citizen rights to indigenous people, to women and, and that sort of thing. Now to regress on that and to go backwards, it should be very concerning. You know, the government isn't telling us much about the technical side of uh, what it wants to do with this referendum. And I think that's either for one of two reasons, or maybe it's both. No, it can only really be for one of two. The first is that it doesn't know. It doesn't know what the voice is. It doesn't know how it's going to work. It doesn't, you know, this, that, the other. It's just got no idea. Uh, well, maybe the Prime Minister thinks that, but I'm sure the people holding him up uh, actually do have some idea. And that is the next point, which is that they don't want people to know. They don't want people to know the truth behind all of this. And what is the voice actually going to do to serve? What is the full implication of the Uluru Statement from the heart? The freedom of information documents that I've just seen uh, that Advance Australia has put up suggest that um, GDP could be allocated to Indigenous communities, uh, which is just ludicrous to me, uh, on top of all the other funding that they get. And of course, the voice would call for that. So I always go back to that great quote by C.S. Lewis, which he wrote in uh, a paper called Equality in 1948 for The Spectator in the UK, uh, when he said that monarchy can be very easily debunked, but mark the faces, uh, watch the debunkers. And do we just trust the people who are telling us our country is so broken and that this will fix it, a race-based advisory body? Do we trust that? Are we really prepared to open Pandora's box? I mean, politicians have never got it right before in the last 60 years. And you really think this most radical proposal that's costing uh, an arm and a leg is going to be the answer, or I just don't buy it, Alexandra. I think there's something really sinister going on behind the scenes. Well, I've never seen anybody make the case of how a imported Marxist movement of black power, which is what this actually is, can fix the remote Indigenous communities who have issues with not sending their children to school, with violence, sexual assault, alcoholism. A voice to Parliament for Canberra is not going to change a single thing on the ground in these communities, but they do pretend that it will. And I've always wondered if Albanese is so interested in the voices of Indigenous Australians, why doesn't he work on helping to get them represent in elections where in some communities as little as 24% of them vote? which is a real shame for the democratic process. But now I'm going to quote you, and you write in your article, if you do not understand how it works, do not vote for it. Recall Christopher Hitchens' famous razor, what can be asserted without evidence can also be dismissed without evidence. It is the responsibility of those advocating for the voice to explain in its entirety, omitting no detail and speculating to its every eventuality. Now, Alexander, I have seen, haven't seen anyone for the Yes campaign offer a single, solid, evidence-based argument for the voice to Parliament. Yeah, I would totally agree with that. And that's because I don't really think there is much to back it up. I don't think that the voice is going to improve the lives of uh, Indigenous people in this country one, one iota. And it's funny that someone like Lydia Thorpe might actually agree with me on that. Um, yeah, it's it's extremely sinister. It's extremely sinister. Hitchens is totally right. You know, it's like the Republic, and so it is with the voice. The people who are making the case for this wide-scale, radical constitutional reform need to prosecute it. They haven't done that, and because they haven't done that, everything that they say should just be totally and utterly ignored as far as I'm concerned.